Hi there everyone and welcome back to All of Fabric 4. I am Akoto and today we're going to get industrial. That's right, we're starting on Industrial Revolution today, so hang out for that. So before we get into Industrial Revolution and everything that goes along with it today, I wanted to show you the final version of this. So notice we've worked on the pathway. We have some azalea trees up. We have our copper lanterns. We sort of eh, just sort of mess with it a little bit. And then, of course, we've added in some details for our little portal thing here. Um, just to make it look a little bit more, I, I don't know, more Rooney, <laughs> I guess. Um, so, and we've gotten a lot of these banners, so I just kept, you know, what, two, four, five of, five, nine, nine, nine of them up over here. Um, but we did uh, have a little bit of chance to upgrade uh, in between episodes, so you notice I'm now wearing all diamond shiny stuff. And you may also notice that this sword is a little bit bigger than what you're used to. This is actually a sword out of a mod called Gate of Babylon, which has a lot of really cool stuff in it. So if you take a look at that, you've got not only your broadswords, but you've also got rapiers, you've got daggers, you've got this bow that I think I'm going to make at some point because it does ridiculous damage and is able to shoot faster. Um, shields, which are really cool. I think I'm going to do one of those as well. So Gate of Babylon actually has a lot of really cool stuff. And if you'll notice, this sword has all of the stuff on it that I had on my old stone sword that I found before, except for the lunar damage, because lunar damage and sharpness don't work nice together. But something I discovered while I was in here enchanting everything, and if you if you notice, we've also got uh, some basic level enchantments on everything, including this bunny hop, which is amazing, and I'll show you that in a second. But if you go over here and grab a book, so check this out. I, I found this out totally by accident. If we go over to this, let's put our broadsword in there and then a book, and it will rip all of the enchantments off and put it on a book. If that does eat the item, just so you know. <laughs> so don't do that expecting to get the sword back because you're not going to get it back. Uh, so that will eat the item, but it'll allow you to take all those enchantments, like all the cool enchantments we had on that stone sword. I was able to rip most of them off and put them on this broadsword, and this broadsword is asinine look at the damage on this 15.5 attack damage now it does have one attack speed but the 15.5 damage more than makes up for that and then just doing some enchanting on my boots i got this bunny hop ability which is so much fun especially with the slime boots so you jump really really high and then the slime boots make you bounce further so it's 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 really it's fun <laughs> it's really fun uh let's sleep and then we'll get started on a few things here so let's talk real briefly about Industrial Revolution. So as you may notice, I've got a bunch of things up here on my saved bar at the top left uh, that are all Industrial Revolution things. Industrial Revolution is one of the few hardcore tech mods that's actually included right now in All of Fabric 4. Uh, you may remember from All of Fabric 3, there were a couple of different tech mods. I think Tech Reborn was in there. Right now... Because uh, AOF 4 is still kind of in development still, and a lot of this stuff has not been ported over to 1.17 compatibility, the only real option we have for industrialization, like hardcore tech mods, is Industrial Revolution. Industrial Revolution has a lot of really cool things in it, though. A lot of things that you may be used to from Tech Reborn or Mechanism or um, Immersive Engineering. A lot of the same types of machines and the same type of mechanics are included in Industrial Revolution, rather than spread out amongst three or four different mods. So, for instance, we've got things saved up here, like we've got a controller, we've got the electric furnace. So, at these, if you've used any kind of tech mod, you know you're familiar with just these electric furnaces that work off of power. We've got a pulverizer, compressor, sawmill, recycler, condenser, fluid infuser, chopper, which I'm guessing has something to do with wood, uh, farmer, slaughter, and rancher. So these, the farmer, I'm guessing I can just make automated farms, which is really nice because I would really like to have all my crops automated. Um, the slaughter, once again, I'm also guessing that that is specifically to like kill animals. The rancher will breed animals and then the basic fisher, which will allow me to get fish, which is actually something I've been kind of wanting anyway. And then over here, we also have something that I put on here from Dank Storage, which is the Dank One, which is the Dank Null. You may be familiar with some other mod packs. So we've got all these things, and actually they're not all that difficult to make. Um, but 
we do need to have a source of power with all of that. And I have chosen to actually go with this redstone generator from Extra Generators, which is a power generation mod that's included within this mod pack. Uh, it actually puts out 256 um, RF per tick. It says E, but that's it's just energy. It's sort of a, a generic uh, nomenclature to use across different mods, So, which is quite a bit. Um, but in order to make that, we have to actually make this first, which is the burnable generator. Real simple to make it, though. It's literally two furnaces, a block of redstone, piston, and some iron. It's stupid easy to make this. And then you could actually just have this set up to create your power. But it only creates 64 RF per tick to a total storage of 32,000, which is not a whole lot, especially when you're looking at all of these things here. That so you're, this is using four per tick. This uses four per tick. Four, 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 four. Uh, the condenser uses sixty-four per tick. So basically, the entire energy output of this generator would go into the condenser if you're using that. Uh, the recycler's eight. The chopper's sixteen. The farmer, the slaughter, the rancher, all sixteen. And these are the Mark One versions. These aren't even the Mark Two versions, which are only slightly better. Um, you know, the Fisher takes eight, and on and on and on, and so on and so forth. So. The burnable generator, while it would be good just to get started, is not where we want to be. But to get to this one, the redstone generator, notice it takes a scalding generator, redstone, and all this. The scalding generator takes two buckets of lava and a burnable generator, and then once again, pistons and iron. We've got plenty of iron now because I've done quite a bit of mining off camera. So we've got quite a bit of iron, and we've got a lot of you know gold and tin and silver and all sorts of different stuff. So really the only thing that we need to go ahead and get started with all of this is some lava, which we can go downstairs to our mine and go grab. So let's go do that real fast, and then we can come back and start working on these generators and start working on Industrial Revolution. And while we're down here looking for, ah, lava, that is what we needed. Oh, did I bring, I didn't bring buckets with me, I'm an idiot. Um, we'll have to go back up and get some more of those. But while we're down here looking for lava, I wanted to show you something that I had mentioned in the last video, but I hadn't really gone, uh, I hadn't really gone over while you were here. So, um, this hammer, this quartz hammer, we now have enchanted with efficiency four, unbreaking three, fortune two, and charmed. Charmed is just adding luck, which is sort of a weird stat that I don't entirely know exactly what it does for me, but I, supposedly it's supposed to. Um, give you more drops, sort of like Fortune does, I think. Something like that. So this hammer is enchanted fully. So with, with everything that you'd normally expect to have on something like a pick. This pick is also enchanted. So we've got Efficiency 4 on that one. We've got Efficiency 4 on this one. So let me show you something real fast. So obviously, you know, ore excavation is a thing in this pack. You're going to ore excavate as much as you please, really. Um, so, but let's take a look at the speed. So right here we've got, we got a little bit of ores and a few other things that we haven't gotten because we've got tons of lead and redstone and all that. But let's just check out the speed here. So on stone, this is pretty standard. This is about as fast as you get without a beacon or anything else going on, right? So which is, you know, it's not terrible. It's, it's actually fairly quick for, you know, what it is. Check out what this does. So let's go over, where do we want to go here? Um... Let's just go, let's just go right here. Watch this. Look how ridiculous this speed is with this. This is the quartz hammer. This isn't even the best of the hammers. This isn't even near the top of the list of the hammers. That's how dumb this thing is. Just, just look at this. And you can put fortune on it. You can put silk touch on it if you wanted to silk touch a whole bunch of stuff. You can put... You know, look at it go through deep slate. Like, there's just no tomorrow. I mean, this is just, it's stupid. <laughs> the amount of materials that you can just grind up with this. And to have fortune on it, too. I mean, I've used hammers in other mod packs before. But I don't think I've ever actually sat down and used a hammer that had fortune on it. Um, you know, probably because by the time you get to the hammer stage, usually you've pretty much at that point out kind of outgrown hammers. Because you're using, like, mining tools and and things out of Ex Nihilo to give you, like, automated resource generation and and all this other crazy stuff. So hammers aren't something that I really ever used a whole lot until this pack because there just wasn't really a good answer. Now, there is a mining tool in there that I want to use at some point. See, we just got, we got four emeralds out of two emerald deposits, which is ridiculous. Let's go put all this stuff back and get some, get some buckets. Um, now, there is a mining tool in Industrial Revolution that I want to get to, but in order to actually get to... The mining tool, we have to have all of the basic machines kind of put together first, unfortunately. 
All right, now that we have our lava, our redstone, some pistons that I actually, this is three pistons I think I found in a, a dungeon or something somewhere, uh, and our iron, so let's go up to our burnable generator. Uh, oh, furnaces, that's what we forgot, which we need to actually go upstairs and get some of our ridiculous amounts of cobblestone we have out here. Well, that's that's fun. We can always use up to some of this, so let's grab a stack of cobblestone. Back downstairs. You know, one of these days i got to move that thing inside. Uh, all right, so, uh, burnable generator. Let's make, um, how many furnaces can we make? Eight? Let's make eight, just to get all that out of there. Uh, and then we need a, let's see, block of iron. Uh, another block of iron. Doo -doo 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 -doo. We're going to need more than that, but let's just get it started that way. So we've got two blocks of iron, block of redstone, pistons, furnaces, iron ingots. Let's make our burnable generator. There we go. And, you know, I'm curious now because how'd that happen? That's, that's weird. I don't know exactly how I did that, but okay. Um, so let's go ahead and toss this down because I'm curious as to how this thing actually works. So does it create? So it doesn't create its own. So you basically have to put stuff in it to burn just like you would any other kind of generator. So, like, we've got the coal generator over here for Industrial Revolution. We could just keep that, but I wanted to experiment with these because I've never used this mod before. I, in fact, I don't think I've ever even heard of this mod before, so I wanted to try it out. So if we put coal in it, let's um, let's just grab some coal here and put the coal in, and now it is creating power. Nice. Well, that's cool. Let's get a little gear there. So I wonder how that interacts with the rest of this. Like, can we use pipes, or do we have to... Uh, what do we have to do here? Let's take a look at extra generators. Because like I said, I've never played with this mod. So, let's see. So it looks like it's just the generator. So I'm guessing we can use pretty much any kind of you know, power cabling with it. And it'll be fine that way. Um, interesting. Okay. So that's your burnable generator. So let's go ahead and take that down. So let's go ahead and upgrade this all the way to our redstone generator. So... Next step, scalding generator, two buckets, two blocks of iron. Uh, let's make, let's just make, I know I'm going to need f four more total, so let's make four blocks of iron. All right, so where to go? Scalding generator, there we go. Let's go ahead and that goes there. We now have a scalding generator. And then the last step, so we can go ahead and remove that and that. And then the last step is the redstone generator, which is, Two blocks of redstone, two blocks of iron, piston, and that, and the scalding generator, which we'll just put in there, and there's our redstone generator. So now I'm curious, does this work off redstone? Oh, this is getting complicated. Oh, this is the coolant, I bet. Or something? Yeah, this is like coolant. So we need coolant for that. So does it... No, it doesn't burn redstone. Does it burn coal? It doesn't burn coal. Okay. What does it burn? <laughs> does it burn lava uh what, wait a minute does it take redstone dust rather than blocks i mean i suppose that's possible nope uh huh well let's play around with that for a little bit <laughs> new mods <laughs> new mods with a koto and he doesn't know what in the world he's doing I have no idea what the hell I'm doing with this, but we'll figure it out. I, it just There's something that goes in here that it burns, and if I have to Google it, I have to Google it. So, um, yeah, give me a second. Let me see if I can figure this thing out. So I figured it out after a lot of trial and error. So basically, I was correct in that you do put blocks of redstone or dust in here, but you also need lava to basically kickstart the mechanism. So you notice we've already got 128,000 energy stored in here. And this creates some just ridiculous amount of redstone energy per tick. So, I mean, this is, like I was saying, this does you know, something just asinine. What, what was it? It was, uh, yeah, 256 per tick. So, it basically, you just have to have blocks of redstone in here and then lava being fed into it. And I think, if I'm remembering, yeah, we've got dripstone. So, we could actually... It basically, using fluid pipes, we could actually have a never-ending supply of lava that we could use using dripstone here. So basically, we could automate the at least the lava portion of the energy of this. So now I need to see, does this actually... Because I made a couple of the others just to test things out. Does this save it once you... 
it does. So it keeps the stored energy. That's fantastic. Okay, good. I can always use the scalding generator too, because it's also lava based. So actually this one, where'd it go? Um, the scalding generator, if you check it out, so it does the same thing. It only stores 64,000, but this might actually be a better alternative because it just straight up uses lava rather than using um, lava and redstone. So it might actually be better to have four or five of these rather than a couple of those as power generation because that's effectively free power because you're just using you know, your vanilla lava farm with dripstone to, to create power. And so, I mean, I, I don't see a reason why we couldn't do that. So we might just actually go with these instead of the redstone generator. But the thing that I have noticed is that this is a lot of machines that we've got up here. So we're going to need a ton of space for this. Like this space over here that I've got these two machines in right here, this is not going to do it. This is just not going to, this is not going to meet our needs. We need to actually have a dedicated room for this. Luckily, I have another brown elevator and we have the elevator over here. So we could actually make an entire industrial revolution room underneath this one. So we'll have our living quarters. We'll have sort of our storage and, and, you know, cooking area. We can maybe put some stuff over here and then we can have sort of a, a machine room underneath all of this. So I think we're going to do that. So, um, give me a couple of minutes. Well, <laughs> for you, it's going to be no time at all. For me, it's probably going to be about an hour <laughs> to go down another level and actually hollow out another area specifically for industrial revolution and our machine room which I'm going to try and make us look as much like a, you know, factory machine room as I can. So uh, give me a second in your time, give me a couple hours in mine, and uh, we'll reconvene downstairs. And an hour of building, a uh, night of sleep, and some work later, we have this room. <laughs> I'm very, very pleased with this room. So it, very simple, just sort of a, a good industrial space a good industrial look the, the polished carbonite on the walls has a really cool industrial look to it as does you know just good old-fashioned stone slabs and the white lit redstone lamps which is just a redstone lamp with some white dye but the roof this is the thing i really like about this so this roof is once again block us to the rescue a magma brick slabs and the cool thing about this is not only do they have the lava texture in between, like as the, the caulking for the brick, which I think is really cool, um, but I love the coloration. And they produce light. So the reason this room looks so well lit up is not just because of these white lit white redstone lamps down here, but also from this that produces a, a decent amount of light too. Like I didn't even need these. I, I could have just gone without those completely because the light level in here was about 10 without them even down this far from the, the ceiling. But I wanted to have it to be really, really bright and really industrial looking, and that's what we've got here. So we have a blank canvas on which to paint our various industrial things, which I am a real fan of. And, of course, we've got the copper over there just to make it look like it's a little bit more supported and more industrial -y and stuff like that. So, yeah, I'm, I'm a fan. So let's, uh, let's go upstairs, and we're going to grab our various stuff out of here and let's get to putting everything together and after a little bit of resource gathering we have i think everything we're going to need to get most of this taken care of so obviously we've got our two items that we already built we have some of our nickelite dust we've got iron copper gold uh tin um well, i think we have lead in here somewhere yeah lead and then we got a couple of these plates that we've made previously just playing around with this We've got our lava, we've got our pointed dripstone. Uh, only thing we really need, actually, I think is glass for the, the pointed dripstone to put the lava on top of. So I'll go up and grab some of that here in just one second. We've got all of our generators, some redstone dust. And then this, which is very important early on because this is the hammer from Industrial Revolution. Just to show you what this does, uh, let's grab iron because I know we'll need iron plates. So basically, you take your hammer, you take your iron, and you get an iron plate out of it. Now, you can do this with the machines that are Industrial Revolution, but when you first start off, you don't have access to those machines. So you're going to have to use the hammer to be able to build all of these things. Let's go grab some glass real fast here. I think 
Um, where did I put glass? Uh, I've got to get this a little bit more, more slightly more organized at some point here. Um, oh, I put glass in there, but I don't have any glass, so we're going to actually have to take some of our sand and go cook it down. But we have a kiln for that now, which is really nice because it cooks glass twice as fast. Nice. So what we're going to do here is we're going to start by building some of these machines. And not obviously we're not going to be able to build all of them because some of them take bronze plates and a few other things, which we don't have access to yet. So let's see what we've got here. So first things first, let's go ahead and get this controller built that takes steel plates. Well, we can't do the controller yet because we don't have access to steel. But the electric furnace. Electric furnace is real simple. It takes, well, it takes bronze too. Man, we've got to... All right, we've got to go find... Okay, so here's a pulverizer. So we can do the pulverizer. I think we can do the compressor. Yep, we can do the compressor. Um, so let's do the pulverizer and the compressor. I thought this was going to be a lot easier than this. I was thinking it was more like Tech Reborn. Silly me. Uh, so we're going to need some furnaces. We're also going to need some stone. And I think that's about it. So let's go see here. So, all right. So starting off with the... Pulverizer, we're talking four copper plates, machine block, battery, some basic stuff. Oh, flint, that's the other thing we needed for this. That's right. I'm very glad I put the elevators in. <laughs> well, I go back and forth and back and forth trying to get all this stuff here. So flint. Flint actually has a use. Huzzah! Yay for flint having a use. Okay. So we've got all of that. Uh, so let's go ahead and uh, we can grab our pocket crafting table out of here. And figure out, let's see, so to make the pulverizer, we need four copper plates, flint, a circuit, a machine block, and a battery. Okay, well, the copper plates are easy enough. We'll just go ahead in here and get ourselves some copper. We've actually already got three copper plates pre-built, which is nice. So there's the fourth one of those. And let's see, the battery takes nickelite dust and tin plates. And we've got, do we have tin plates? We do have some tin plates, but we need more. So let's take our blocks of tin out. Sm Whoa. No, no, no. I need... Eh. Come on. Thank you. Uh, let's see. I think I needed, what, three more? One, two, three. There we go. So there's our tin plates. Uh, let's see. Compressor. One, two, three, four. Oh, I only need five. Okay, that's fine. Uh, some nickelite dust. Fantastic. Let's go into our crafting table here. Uh, so the battery. We've got that made. And then to do the machine block, we need iron plates and nickelite dust. So let's get our iron out of here. I need one more iron plate, so that's easy enough. There we go, iron plate. Back to our pulverizer, machine block. There's our machine blocks. We've got our machine block and our battery now. Uh, we need four copper plates. The Mark I circuit is a gold plate, copper plates, and nickelite dust. So let's grab some of our gold, some of more copper, because we're going to need more of these copper plates anyway. Let's make six of those. Let's make oh, eight of those. Notice how quickly the durability on your hammer goes down. It has a durability of 32. So the quicker you can get this stuff built, the better off you are, because each one of these hammers takes five iron to make. So it's a very this is a very resource intensive um, kind of of mod. It really is. It's a very resource intensive tech mod. So this isn't something that, uh, unfortunately, you're not going to be able to get into it right away. Typically, so let's grab this other hammer here. Maybe we'll just combine them to get a little bit more use out of that. There we go. Okay, so now where are we at here with our pulverizer? So we've got our copper plates, our machine block, our battery. We need our Mark I circuit, so that's taken care of. And then two flint, and there we go. We have a Mark I pulverizer, and we get the achievement. It's getting dusty. And if you go over here and look at the advancements, uh, let's see, where's the beginning? There it is. We now have our pulverizer. So we're basically going to build most of these here. Um, the modular workbench might have to wait. I think it takes steel, unfortunately, because that's how you make the modular armor set, which is the absolute 100% best armor in this mod. And I believe it takes steel, so we're going to have to wait a little bit to get that one. Um, we can also get a recycler to make biomass for a biomass generator and so on and so on and so on. Um, so, yeah, so we've got our pulverizer, which we can put in here with the rest of our little machines down here in the bottom. So we've got a coal generator, a diffuser, 
and a pulverizer. So the infuser and pulverizer definitely are going in. The coal generator we really don't need at this point because we do have these other generators that we're going to put in. So let me go ahead and get a couple of these other things made and I'll be back with you in just a minute. So yeah, that, uh, we got to sleep here. That uh, is not functional because even though I was able to make the tank finally and put the fluid pipe on the tank with the lava in the tank over into the generator, it wouldn't transfer the fluids there because apparently you need to do it by buckets into those, those generators, which is just ridiculous. But anyway, so we are going to go to the nether and get ourselves some lava just to go ahead and do this manually to get it up and running. And as you notice, I sort of dressed up the, lo the, up the lava and <laughs> the uh, nether portal a little bit just with some nether blocks. And this is, once again, block us to the rescue. We've got some different types of nether rack blocks. We've got some red nether bricks. We've got some, you know, nether ward, a tree, you know, magma blocks. I, I think it looks really cool. It looks, it looks kind of like the nethers kind of take over which I think is a really cool look for another portal. So it's just random blocks thrown together like, you know, it's just randomly being built into another structure, which I kind of think was kind of kind of cool. So, so we're going to go to the nether, and we're going to get ourselves a little bit of lava. And while we're there, I'll show you something else. Luckily, there is no shortage of lava in the nether, so we can just go ahead and get a bunch of lava there we go let's shove that into our backpack along with these ender pearls and this gunpowder that we got for no good reason and, and all right so the other thing i'm not wearing gold so this should be interesting um the other thing to show you here is yeah whatever dude i've got the sword of doom you better not do that down here is something that's very very interesting. So we just have to go down this direction. Oh, that's a little bit too far. We have a blaze spawner in and and another, I guess you'd say a, a nether mine, which is kind of cool. So yeah, so we have a blaze spawner right in here. So we don't need another fortress because we've got out this. So I'm going to turn this into a proper blaze farm at some point. But for right now, I want to go ahead and plop down one of our waystones that we were able to make. Um, let's just put it, let's just put it right here. That's fine. And then we've got amethyst mines. Uh, yeah, we're not going to call it, I'm sorry, we're not calling it that. We're not calling it this. We're going to change it to blaze grinder because this will be a proper blaze grinder at some point. Um, I'm not going to take it back because it's, there's a really long, it's a really long way to walk to get it all the way back to our base to make a, you know, a blaze grinder there out of it. Besides, I like having the the gold piglin farm right there. So, so we now have access to ooh, blaze rods through this here blaze spawner, which is really, really awesome. All right. So we got our lava. We got some more blaze rods. Let's go ahead and go back home here. And we're off. Cross dimensions. Whoa. This is this is not home. Did I accidentally hit the Jolly Roger? I must have. Let's go home. There we go. <laughs> that was weird. So yeah, as I said, unfortunately I was not able to get the get everything to play nice with one another. I had to actually make a compressor and a solid infuser to get steel to make the tanks, but unfortunately the tanks don't work. With uh, where'd they go? With these. I don't know why they don't work with those. They just don't. Don't ask me questions that I can't answer. <laughs> it's just, I don't, I don't get it. I, I really, I really don't understand why they don't. Because in mechanism, in Tech Reborn, sometimes you need to actually have like a wrench to adjust things so that you got input and output. The wrench in Industrial Revolution only changes the direction of the pipes, whether they're item pipes or fluid pipes. It doesn't actually change the direction things are flowing in. So I don't know if there's something that I am missing somewhere or if these are just not uh, the, these particular things aren't compatible with the, the extra generators aren't compatible with the fluid dynamic transfers that you get from industrial revolution. I, I don't know. I honestly don't. So for the time being, we're just going to go ahead and power them as normal here. So if we do this 
and that, and then basically you can see how it. I think they each hold four. Yes, they each hold four. So, so each one of these holds four. Um, you can pull the lava out, and it'll just basically just create energy as it goes. So, uh, I mean, it's it's fairly fairly straightforward. I, I'm certain I am missing something somewhere. I'm certain this is my my failing and not a failing of the mod. I just don't know precisely what that failing is or what I'm missing. But I'm, I'm certain I'm missing something. But you know, once you've got these ready to go, I mean, it's real simple to get them going. Uh, this one's already got full power, but we'll go ahead and put two more lava buckets in just to be on the safe side. There we go. So all of these, whoops. So all of these are now full. They're generating power. This one's already done. Perfect. Uh, can I put another one in there? No, not yet. Okay. But I could put that there to prep it. So I could do that. So let's do that. Just so it's got it ready to go and prepped. So now it's prepped for being refilled, basically. Okay. So I mean we got those ready to go, and now it's just a matter of hooking up all of these things here. So, and that's very straightforward, as we take all of these, and can we direct them, can we connect them directly? That is a question. I don't know. I don't know if you can connect them directly or not, or if you need power. I'm guessing you probably can do either. You can either connect them directly or use cables. Um, I'm going to go ahead and use cables just to be on the safe side. And then we can always go back. And if that's not how things work later on, we can always, you know, figure it out from there. Oh, look, I got two crossbows from those piglins. Fantastic. <laughs> that's that's handy. All right. So let's go ahead and plate to Nicolite. Oh, wait. Other way around. <laughs> there we go. So now we've got Mark 1 cables. Now there is a heat generator in... And industrial revolution here. However, I mean, and it, I suspect that that's where you could actually use like the tank um, to to use the pipes to put the lava into it, and so on and so on and so on. So there is that. But if you look at how much it takes to build, it takes lead plates, which are easy. It takes heat coils, simple machine block, fine battery, cool. Enriched nickelite ingot is a little bit harder, but it's not terrible at least like the nickelite ingot is just iron and nickelite dust to make a nickelite ingot in the fuser which is easy that's fine but then you go to this a mark four circuit so you need to have lead plates enriched nickelite ingots and then it takes a mark three circuit which takes enriched nickelite and electrum a mark two circuit that takes silver which i have plenty of and nickelite ingots and the mark ones i mean it, it's just ridiculous the amount of work involved in making that heat generator on there now we may actually end up doing that because i want to try and automate as much as this as i possibly can but for right now i think we're just gonna because these are all fully powered fully powered fully powered yes fully powered okay well that's fine so and then this coal generator can just sort of go the way of the dodo at this point because we really don't need it if all of this actually will work. <laughs> so this is the beginning of our industrial setup for this is these three, the pulverizer, the solid infuser and the compressor. And then we need to move on to the electric furnace, which now that we actually have access to the infuser, we can make the bronze plates. So to make bronze ingots is real simple. You go over here to make so bronze dust um in the pulverizer so the infuser is basically tin and copper it's just like any other bronze recipe that you've ever seen so um the only thing i have not seen so far is ore doubling i don't think there's any way to actually do ore doubling in this unless you can take the raw iron and stuff and and turn it into you know regular things but i haven't seen oh did i miss the tin oh yeah tin there we go so we need to make some bronze so we'll go down here and do that in our handy dandy little compressor to compress up some copper and some tin and make some bronze out of it so eh, 16 should probably be good so we'll do that and that should yes that is going to go ahead and turn into dust so as soon as we get the bronze ready i'll get back to you and our bronze is done well yep our bronze is actually done we've gone ahead and upgraded these with fans which do i guess help with temperature um and we've got our electric furnace over here. Now, something I did notice is that when all of these are side by side, 
they will connect with one another, which is actually really cool. So, like, over here, you pulverize whatever it is, and then it goes into the solid infuser, and then it goes into the electric furnace. So the electric furnace is now making bronze ingots, which is kind of neat, actually. So, and uh, this is still working over here. It's still got plenty of lava. That's got plenty of lava. Uh, this one this one probably is going to need more lava, I'm guessing. Um, so, I mean, I love the connection abilities with all of these. It's, it's actually really nice, but... In some cases, you don't want them connected. So, like for the for our compressor over here, we don't want to compress things all the time. So we're going to have to have that sort of separate from all the rest of these. Because anything that we're pulverizing and then and sending over here is more than likely for infusing anyway. And then we want to turn it into ingots. So that makes sense. But like this, so this compressor here needs to be sort of separated from everything else. So I made this, and I have no idea what it does. <laughs> I, like, literally have no idea. There's no interface. There's no nothing for it. But I figured this out. It's this little thing down here. See that little blue thing? That is a retriever servo. So, in other words, yes, you can have tanks that are pulling from this. So, if we put... Let's actually grab another bucket out of here. And then let's put this up there. Is that actually working? It doesn't appear so. Okay, well, that's... That's okay. Because we at least got this part of it working, which is, to me... There's an Enderman around here somewhere. Uh, which, to me, is, is a win. So, because, yeah, you put that in there, and then I'll put this one in there, and then that'll fill all the way up. So this will work. And this actually will hold... A whole bunch of lava. Now the next question is, can I just go fill this up in the nether by itself? Because that would be even better. I somehow doubt it, but, I mean, we can try. And the nice thing is, is that everything that's in the tank, just like Tinker's Construct with the tank that's there, will stay. So, let's go down back to the nether again real fast. Alright, so here we go. Will this work? No, it will not. So, we're going to have to do it the old-fashioned way. But that, you know what? That's okay, because we've got, like, you know, some ridiculous amount of buckets on us here. So in between episodes, I'm going to be figuring out how to put more tanks up here, sort of changing out how our power, how, how all this is going to route everywhere and get power to all these different machines. But I think we've made a pretty good start on Industrial Revolution for right now, so it, it's just a matter of a lot of trial and error, unfortunately. And there's a couple of recipes that aren't listed, so I had to go look them up and try and figure out how to make them just by throwing blocks at the problem until it actually came out. This pipe looks like I'm about to beat someone in the head with it. <laughs> I hope you enjoyed today's episode. I hope you had fun with Industrial Revolution. Next episode, we'll probably do something more adventure-based, since we've done a lot of sort of technical kind of things in the last few episodes. But since Industrial Revolution is one of the few tech mods in the pack, I definitely wanted to go over it here. Still not sure if I like it or not. I still don't, I still think I like Mechanism and Tech Reborn overall better than this than industrial revolution um it seems like industrial revolution originally came from ae2 which explains why i wouldn't like it as much as others say hello to the barking dogs <laughs> but because uh, ae2 i was never really a fan of honestly i love mechanism i love tech reborn they're very simple they're easy to deal with obviously tinker's construct and immersive engineering are two of my favorite mods as well this one, less so. I mean, I, I like. there's certain things about it I really like, and there's certain things about it that are really counterintuitive. So, But I do hope you enjoyed it. If you have any comments about what I've got here or have any ways to improve my setup, please, by all means, leave them down in the comment section below. I'm always looking for more help with new tech mods, especially, because I'm more the builder kind of guy. I like building mods and pretty things. And like the tech mods, some of them are really cool, and I really like them, and some of them are just really hard for me to wrap my head around. So that's just how it is. So if you see something that you think I can improve, by all means, toss it down in the comment section below. And if you know what this controller thing does, I'd appreciate you telling me about that as well. So uh, feel free to hit the like button and subscribe on your way out the door. If you have not subscribed already, we do a lot of Minecraft content on this channel, both vanilla and modded, and a few other things here and there as well, as you can probably see from looking over the different things I've done on my channel over the last few years. So by all means, feel free to subscribe. But if you don't, that's fine too. Just I'm glad you were able to hang out and had a good time, and I hope you learned something along the way. But whatever you do tonight, whether you like and subscribe or whether you, you enjoyed this episode or not, make sure you go out tonight, play some games, have some fun. I'll see you all again real soon. Prepare for the invisibility. Have a good night, folks.